Hello. How are you? I'm well. How about you? I'm doing well, thank you. Doing How was well. your day? It was a day. It was a good day, actually. Um, okay. Actually, it was a great day. It was a great good. day. Good. Yes. And, your, and your weekend? It was good. It was good. How about yours? It was good as well, yes. Had to attend a repast for a friend's mother who passed away, but... Um, you know, but then we ended up at a birthday party, so another type of celebration. So mm -hmm. it was a, a good weekend. Yeah, still celebrating life, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, they did, they said that Saturday in D.C. was the coldest Saturday um, since in 20 years uh, in September in D.C. Mm -hmm. So... But it was, uh, I know it was cold because you were out Saturday night as well. Yes, it was cold. But, it, but you know, it was comfortable for me because I like the cold. So I was perfectly okay with that. So Yes, I had on two jackets and a vest. <laughs> so it was good. You know, I'm excited to, uh, you know, bring Business Monday back again to everybody. Um, and in case uh, folks weren't aware, the president uh, has declared proclaimed September 20th through the 26th as National Small Business Week. Mm -hmm. So the SBA is uh, having a free National Small Business Week virtual conference. And it'll be, um, they'll be having presentations from numerous business ex experts, uh, mentoring and virtual networking sessions. And they're all designed to help entrepreneurs retool, pivot, and come back stronger than than they were before. Because, you know, a lot of businesses are going out of existence and um, and other people are on the verge or on the edge and looking to start businesses. So, or some of those people who are going out of business are looking to, you know, like the words retool, reinvent, you know, look at other uh, areas that they can maybe venture into. Um, they're also going to announce the Small Business Person of the Year for the SBA at this event. Um, and if you want more information, anybody that's listening, you can go to sba.gov to get uh, information on how to access this free virtual event. Now, normally they have it in some big city somewhere. Did you ever go to one of those? I've been to the one when it's in DC, yes. Oh, in DC, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they usually have it in different parts of the um, of the of the United States, mm -hmm. and um, and there are massive amounts of people that that attend. I know, mm -hmm. um, so yes. So you're not up for Small Business of the Year this year, are you? Not that I'm aware of. You know, okay. Jalen has been winning a lot of awards here lately, yes, but I'm not aware. Yes, you um, have. That's that's wonderful too. Um, yeah, they're just coming out of nowhere, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's a blessing because, um, you know, we were just notified here recently that we won an award and, you know, people nominate us for these awards and sometimes mm -hmm. we don't know who actually nominate us. Uh -huh. So I'm just grateful that I made a lasting impression that someone would, you know, take the initiative to do that. So right, that's great. Right. No, that is great. That is very great. Um, so, you know, last Business Monday, we had a glitch in our um, our system. So the the gentleman, his name is uh, Fabina Slaughter, who normally sets up and or hosts our three person event. So you can only do two people if you just go straight into uh, Instagram. But if you want to bring on three or more people, they've got some devices where you know you go to Zoom and then they project you onto. Uh, Instagram. And so we had to find an individual to do that for us. And he has since, uh, he's going to uh, George Washington University for his uh, PhD. And, uh, you know, of course, we're very excited for him. And we're so excited about the fact that he's helped us uh, through our three or more persons, uh, small business uh, or business Monday events. But he has a class on Monday night at five o'clock when we meet. So he couldn't do it anymore. So he recommended another gentleman to help us out. And the other gentleman, um, I guess he was new to the to how to do that. And so we lost our feed. We lost your um, your visual. We lost my visual later. We lost you know a bunch of things. And so we didn't really get the product that we were expecting to get. So the individual that we had on last week, Everett Pearsall, is an amazing man. 
who's doing so much for young African-American men. Um, and I'll let you talk a little bit about that, Ronette, but we're going to have to redo his segment because it didn't come out the way we wanted it to. So, um, but yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about it. was Yeah, it was just truly amazing of what he's doing in the community for these young men. are outstanding athletes uh, mm -hmm. who yes. uh, play football or uh, basketball, but the majority of them, I believe, have been football players, but football. Um, uh, they are higher than a 4.0 GPA. They have to do community service. They help their families. They're just truly outstanding citizens, and they afford this, um, this opportunity to win this award to be a Watkins man, mm -hmm. and a lot of them play for professional football teams now, as we have um, our number seven for the Washington football team, our quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, yes. is one of the Watkins men. So we look forward yes. to having Everett back on just to tell us a little bit more about what he's doing, because not only is he doing things around the United States, but he's doing things in his hometown, uh, yes. in, in you know Baltimore, Pittsburgh, I mean, just all over some of the stuff that he's doing. So we look forward to having Everett back on with us uh, soon. Yes, absolutely. Because we, we've got to get that information out. Oh, it, it was so good. To our listeners. So good. It's absolutely amazing. I think he's originally from the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. area. So, mm -hmm. so that's where he actually started his giving back. And, you know, yeah. even though we're part of the Adopt the School program, but he had that going on long before we even heard of it. Absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, you know, another thing that happened uh, this past week and this past week was we lost the notorious RBG, um, Judge, Supreme Court Judge, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. What an amazing woman um, and what an impact her passing has had on so many people around the world. It was amazing for me to turn on the news the night that she passed and see all those people that went to the Supreme Court, as soon as they heard about her passing, you know, it's amazing how like minds think, you know, they just wanted to go and pay tribute to, to her legacy. And mm -hmm. there were so many people up there. I mean, some people got together and sang Amazing Grace. Um, people took their children up there that night because they wanted their children to know, you know, what she meant to them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she said that her mother taught her the value of independence and of a good education. She was the second female and first Jewish female justice of the Supreme Court. I think Sandra Day O'Connor was the first female mm -hmm. and she was the, the second female, but the first Jewish female. You know, the Jewish folks in America had a hard time back in the day too. So she went through a lot, um, you know, being raised in New York and all to, um, to get to where she is today. So we both had an opportunity to actually see her on numerous occasions mm -hmm. at arena stage mm -hmm. the theater here in southwest dc she loved the theater and as you've heard on tv she loved the opera um and she attended every opening night she yes. was there she was yes. always there so i think you have a quote that uh that you really liked of hers that you want to share yes and in reference to uh, opening night um i remember you know, we went, we've been to so many opening nights at Arena Stage, and I remember the first time I was sitting down there, if not on the front row, but somewhere close to the stage, and I just happened to turn around, and she was sitting behind me, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, um, it was just an honor to see her in person, and she's a, she was a beautiful spirit, truly a beautiful yeah. spirit. But, yes, yeah. one of my uh, favorite quotes um, from RBG was, my mother told me to be a lady. And for her, that meant be your own person, be independent. Yeah, you know? I and I can just so relate to those words because <laughs> I received those words from my mother too. <laughs> <laughs> so truly an inspiring woman. Yes. And you know, she fought against gender discrimination and mm -hmm. she was a, a stern, hard fighter for, for women's That's rights. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, you know, I think uh, I saw something on the news uh, the other day where someone asked her, how many women do you think should be on the Supreme Court? She said, I know a lot of people aren't going to like this answer, but it should consist of all women. 
<laughs> whatever the number was, eight or nine, I think it's nine. She said all of them should be women. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, she is absolutely amazing. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that as we mentioned early on that the uh, Small Business Administration's uh, conference, um, at their conference, they're going to be discussing remodeling, ret not remodeling, retooling, or the possibility of pivoting your business. Because we'll be we'll be discussing some of those topics today. Um, I, when we came up with our items of discussion, I just happened to look at my email um, just before we came on, and I'm like, oh my goodness, the uh, Small Business Administration is going to be talking about some of the same things that we're talking about. So. Um, you know, COVID has affected so many people and businesses. And, you know, we have a few highlights of business related areas that we're bringing to you mainly for awareness. So you can take the information, follow up on it, see if it's something that's beneficial to you and your business. And I know I've mentioned numerous times uh, previously that so many companies got their starts during economic downturns or recessions, for instance. Um, so one of those, or some of those companies are Trader Joe's, Toll House Cookies. Everybody likes to eat cookies, regardless <laughs> of whether we're in a downturn or not. Uh, MailChimp, uh, Airbnb, you know what Venmo is? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. It's like, yes. it's like a cash app, right? Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. one got started also during an economic uh, downturn. Um, so the COVID-19 pandemic is definitely an opportunity to turn hardship into opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just wanted to talk to, you know, some of you business owners who are looking at retooling um, to, you know, give you some ideas or if you've lost your job or if your business failed or, you know, you filed for bankruptcy and you don't know where to go. I mean, think about starting a business. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You know, get it in your mind. Don't let it go. Follow through. So, you know, just some of the things that we talked about, Ronetta, you can chime in any time. Um, I, I access an online uh, community called uh, Community for Entrepreneurs for Business Leaders and Investors. And um, so, I, you know, I came up with some ideas on um, some of the things that they talked about. You know, once you decide to do it, be determined to see it through. Uh, don't be terrified, especially if you failed at a business. Don't keep that in your mind. Let it go. Uh, because you might be terrified to try it again. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, I can do this. I can do this. Even though we haven't failed in business, uh, knock on wood, we still... <laughs> do that you know from time to time we have to stand in the mirror and reinforce to ourselves you know especially when something happens that we're like oh my god where'd that come from out of the clear mm -hmm. blue you know mm -hmm. i can get through this you can do this so you know manage your money cut your expenses um manage your time you know don't let people get you into long drawn out uh conversations going nowhere you know, take control of the situation and uh, focus on one thing at a time, especially if you don't multitask well. You know, I read something where they said, if it's four o'clock in the morning, go to one of the truck stops. You know, if you can't get any peace and quiet at home or time to air out your thoughts, go somewhere else and take your laptop, go sit in the corner and do what you need to do to focus on where you want to go. Um, don't burn yourself out. Uh, know what your limits are. Uh, they also talked about eating high energy foods like sweet potatoes and drink green tea and nuts and spinach uh, are ideal. Um, and make a plan. It's important to make a comprehensive plan and um, stick to it. Absolutely. And on, on the on the flip side, I would like to add that, you know, for us who are still in business, you know, if you um, are just really trying to maintain even during this COVID season or, you know, struggling to get to that next level. Um, while we're here, we're all working from home. Mm -hmm. Don't burn yourself out, right? Because we tend to get up in the morning and we are, you know, as soon as we get downstairs or to our laptops or our computers, we're already active, right? It may be 10 o'clock before we finish. And then you have to remember to stop and eat 
maybe take a walk, get some exercise. Um, but don't allow the work to consume you because it's still going to be there tomorrow, right? Yes, exactly. So don't think that everything has to get done right then and right now. Right. So, Jen, I don't know about you, but I know earlier we had talked and it was after two and you said, wait, I haven't eaten yet. I need to eat. <laughs> because sometimes we allow work to, you know, to take most of our time. Yes, exactly. Have you noticed the same, right? Absolutely, yeah. You know, in, in my situation, um, I did eat a, a, a small cup of oatmeal this morning when I first got up, but then I was on uh, Teams calls and Zoom yes, calls yes. up until the time that we talked, and it's hard to, to eat when people are looking at you. <laughs> you know, I know a couple of people on the call um, took their cameras off, turn your cameras off. But of mm -hmm. course, since I'm the lead person, I got to keep my camera on, right? right. And, uh, and when we called on her to speak, she said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm chewing my food right now. So, so I'm like, oh, you get, to, you get a chance to eat, I don't. But no, it's, uh, it's very true though. You really have to make sure you take some time for you. Um, exactly. you know, and it's so difficult because you know, and people were saying, every time we have a conversation with someone, everybody says the same thing. They said, I work harder since I've been working from home than I did when I used to go to the office every day. And a lot of that is, you know, uh, when you were going to the office, you would have that maybe however long it takes you for, to get from home to the office, some people an hour, some people longer, some people maybe even less. But you have that time to just think you know, maybe even plan your day, think about things that you need to do, you know, think about family situations or so many things. Now you just get out of the bed, you know, brush your teeth, wash your face, change your top, and, <laughs> and get on a call, a Zoom right. call or a Teams call, right. and, and then there, there starts your day. And then you don't have that time when you get off work to go home. Right. It's right. like, you know, people know that you're working from home, so you're your boards that you're on, I mean, they just go longer and longer yes. and longer. Yes. Um, and, you know, so. I, that... and, yeah. And I would say, remember that, you know, for those of you who have families at home, don't forget them too, yes. right? Because we tend to work so much that we neglect the family that's sitting right here in front of us. Exactly. So try to make time for your family, have dinner together, at least one meal if you can. And some people have students or children who are in class. Yes. You know, so they're trying to balance that out as well. But at least find that common time where the family can all come together and be as one. Very um, important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. that was just my little two cents. No, that's good. <laughs> so so another thing that um, is, is on our agenda to talk about today is, and I didn't know this existed, and maybe my um, my, my people do, but I'm, I think that I may not fall in the category of uh, being able to take advantage of this, but there is a small business health care tax credit. So I'm um, not sure if um, any of you knew that, but um, so one of the most important employee benefits, of course, to consider is health insurance. And there, may, there might be a tax credit that can help you if your business or organization qualifies. So your business may qualify for the small business credit if you have fewer than 25 employees. Um, pay average wages, uh, if you pay average wages less than $50,000 per employee or you offer a qualified health plan through the what they call the SHOP, which is a small business health options program marketplace, and you pay at least 50% of the cost of employee health plans. So eligible small businesses can carry the credit backwards or forward. Um, so if you missed it, you can go back and claim it or you can go forward and claim it. And uh, it, it's eligible small tax exempt organizations can claim a refundable credit. So these are things that um, the Affordable Care Act authorizes for us. If, even if you have more than 50 employees, there's a sliding scale credit credit that's based on the size of the employer. So the larger the employer, the smaller the tax credit and vice versa. But it's uh, some even tax exempt organizations, um, not pro nonprofits, not for profits, um, they are also eligible for the tax credit. So it's something that uh, I suggest that you look into. Um, it's a government incentive 
such as this small business tax credit are there to help bridge the gap uh, and allows more Americans access to decent health care, which is something that, you know, um, our future elected leaders are talking about, people already there are talking about, you know, we're one of the few countries in the world that don't have uh, universal health care for all of our people and other countries do. So look and take a look and see if it can help your small business. It's, it's all I recommend. I can't tell you whether it work, it'll work for you or not. I can't tell you um, the benefits, the pros and cons of it, but just look into it and see. That's very helpful for me as a small business owner. Um, I'm under that 50 uh, employee mark, so that will be very helpful for us. And so I definitely will reach out to my uh, CPA and my HR uh, broker to start discussing this because it will be a great help for us as a small business. So thank you, Jan, for bringing that to my attention. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. You know, every Business Monday, we learn something new. We, yes, we do. And, 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 you know, so that's the wonderful thing about Business Monday is, you know, we're not only imparting information to others, but we're learning ourselves as we go. Absolutely. So, um, so that that's exciting and you know when i get to a point where i can't learn something then you know i've, I've got a problem so uh it, it's good to know these things um you know some other things uh that we thought we would kind of expound on a little bit is uh business insurance okay mm -hmm. so so one thing you don't want to do is put your business at risk you know for getting sued by you know, employees, uh, people who may fall and get hurt in your establishment. So you have to make sure that you protect your business. Um, and if a lawsuit is, is going to happen, it's going to happen, and there's not a whole lot you can do to stop it. Uh, so you really should have an attorney or retainer or a pro bono attorney, one that, you know, you need to kind of pick an attorney out before you need them. So you'll know which one you really want to use um, or get a recommendation from somebody that you trust uh, as far as an attorney goes, because you never know when you might need to use one. Um, you make sure that, you know, when you're having conversations with your people um, or you're talking about somebody or some other company, you know, don't uh, publicly make comments that you can't take back. Uh, just be careful uh, and who could be careful who you do business with. Make sure they're not questionable, questionable. And uh, make sure you, you know, you need to put your business in a trust or incorporate it to help protect your personal assets in case your firm is sued. So just make sure you have the appropriate liability insurance. Um, make sure your computers are protected from hacking. You know, that's going on quite a bit these days. Uh, the Russians, the Russians and the Chinese, they're all just, you know, making it um, really bad for uh, people who are trying to do the right thing. So, you know, you think, oh, I'm small, you know, nobody's going to really mess with me, but you never know. So you just need to make sure that you're protected. You've been invested a lot of time and money into your business and it could easily get wiped out if uh, unforeseen, unforeseen events occur. Go ahead, Ronette. No, I was going to say uh, what you said earlier about, um, you know, um, finding an attorney. You know, definitely I would go based off of relationships, but do your homework. Um, if you know somebody who's already in the business, especially the line of business that you're in, uh, you want to find an attorney that specializes in that area. Sometimes a general attorney can help you all the way around, but when it comes to uh, specific things, you need that type of uh, attorney. But for instance, you know, we're in the government contracting space. So me, of course, we're going to look for attorneys who know the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulations, uh, who know the acquisition management system or whatever government um, guidance is out there for small businesses or for businesses in general, if you're doing business with the federal government. So government contracting. Uh, so I would definitely recommend that you find someone um, that you know and trust uh, and definitely interview them. You know, uh, I've had my attorney for 10 years that we've been in business, but I met my attorney through my mother's company because, you know, that's who she used and she trusted. And so, hence, um, he helps me as well as needed. So, 
Um, and then as you were talking earlier about um, preventative measures so that you don't get sued, make sure that in your office, in your HR office or in a common area, you have all of your HR posters up. You have all of your OSHA standards up. You know, just you have all of that stuff in place so that whenever your business be, uh, is or someone comes to audit your business, that you have all of your um, policies, or not policies, but the um, preventative stuff that's supposed to be up on your walls. You know, you're supposed to have your business license showing. You know, you're supposed to have the HR rules. You're supposed to have OSHA. So all of that stuff. And whatever the minimum wage is, that has to be up for whatever your state is. So things like that have to be in place. And then, you know, right now during COVID, um, if you walk into... Uh, your office, right? So you have hand sanitizers there, you have plexiglass up, you have right. the six foot distance uh, markers all across the floor throughout your office. Right. So there's there's a lot of preventive maintenance that's already been done. So I encourage you as you, you know, eventually think about going into the workspace or, you know, you starting a business or you have your business already in play, make sure you have your preventative measures already done and identified. Right. Exactly. Um, so, you know, another risk that you have to consider is something happening to you, the business owner. Yes, yes. So you need to make sure that you have something in place uh, in case that happens as well. I know we all think that, you know, we're, bought, we're, we're in, invincible mm -hmm. and that we're mm -hmm. probably going to live, you know, I'm going to make it to tomorrow. I'm going to make it to tomorrow. We don't know that. So just think about that. Make sure you have yourself and your business covered um, and all your, um, everybody identified, of, of things identified of what you want to happen if something happens. To right, you. so succession planning pretty much, right? So yes. mm -hmm. who's going to take over if something happens? Yeah, right. so there's, there's lots of steps that you need to do. And, and a lot of that, you know, should be, in, it's not always though, in your business plan or in your succession plan written out so that, um, everybody's identified as to who's going to do what. So I agree with you on yes. that one. Yeah, I think, though, that even if it's in your plan, you really need to put some things in formal writing. Yes. But, uh, yeah, to make sure that that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I've done all my uh, estate planning, mm -hmm. and I'm, I've got everything. I don't have the business in the trust, but I've got it covered. But I put everything now that I purchase in the name of, of Janice Adams Trust, the Living Trust. So I um, think that's important for you to uh, know yes. that. Yes. Think, think about those things. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe we should um, get a financial advisor on the call uh, here soon so that business mm -hmm. owners know exactly what they need to do yes. uh, to start that process, right? Yes. And not only for the business, but for yourself as well, yes. right? Exactly. Like you just said, you have a trust established. Yes. So, you know, there will be no issues, but people need to really start thinking about that, especially if you're a single business owner. You right. really need to think about uh, the future of your company. Right. Well, single, um, you know, partners. Right. It's important for all of them. Yes. All of them. Yes, yes, for sure. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll make sure we bring somebody on that can elaborate a lot more about that because it's so important. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was looking for it, but um, we have a comment here. Speaking of succession planning, aren't there companies that didn't really plan and are caught out looking for qualified leaders in such situations? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. And I'll have to, you know, just say that when I started JLAN, and I know I told this story long ago, and I, I often repeat it, but I named Jaylen after my four children, right? Jamie, Lene, Asia, and Nia. It's the first letter, first initial of their um, of their names. But it was the hopes that eventually one of them would take over the business. I have two of them working in the business now, so we'll see what happens. But um, you know, hopefully it can stay in the family. The business can continue, and it will provide generational wealth for all of our family. Yes, absolutely. Um, my and my company is just my initials. Janice Marlene Adams, JMA Solutions. So, so yeah, I I couldn't think of a a name. You know, I kept saying, "What am I going to name the company?" And when I told um, my friend Mike Gaw that I was going to, he said, "Oh, that's dumb." <laughs> that's so Mike. That is so Mike. <laughs> I know. 
I said, well, Mike, I can't think of anything else. Everything else is taken on, uh, you know, Google. You Google it and it's taken. And I can't get a website with it. And I'm like, I'm just going to do it. So <laughs> I and, did and, it. And, and JMA is an award-winning company. <laughs> Look at that. You need to call Mike and say, hey, Mike, guess what? I know. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. He works for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly, right? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so, so another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, raises versus bonuses for your small business, your employees. Mm -hmm. um, evaluating the pros and cons of raises versus bonuses and striking the right balance between the two um, can help businesses achieve their staffing goals uh, while also maintaining a healthy bottom line. And the bottom line is always profit. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting because uh, we do both uh, in JMA. Um, they both boost morale and they incentivize employees and ensure that the staff feels rewarded and appreciated because that's something you always want to make sure. And there's no way to f make a staff feel rewarded and appreciated than to give them some cash money in some kind of way. So raises are a permanent increase in payroll. Um, bonuses are a variable expense and therefore give business owners a greater financial flexibility, especially if business is down. You know, so raises actually go against your bottom line because mm -hmm. you know, those are committed. Bonuses you can kind of adjust according to you know, what your, how, how great or how much business you did for the year, how much profit you get. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, bonuses can be tied to sales or production volumes um, and, and so many other things. So I, I, I think the bottom line is before you actually uh, make a determination of what you're going to give, you need to make sure your accountant your uh, senior accountant, your CFO, whatever you have, or whoever is doing your accounting to make sure that, you know, what you decide to give uh, won't severely impact your profit. Um, you know, there's other forms of compensation, uh, partnerships, stock, profit sharing, um, tickets to culture or sports events and gift certificates. Um, I know we, we used to do the uh, Redskins and the Wizards and, you know, we maybe get a sweep for a Mystics game or a Caps game and uh, let our folks do a lot of those, the tennis matches. Uh, the, um, the and Arena Washington. Stage. Mm -hmm. and Arena, Arena stage. stage, the theater, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And they give us discounts over there because we're a donor, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so we try to uh, do that with our folks, but, you know, some people are like, they don't really look at those things as bonuses. Mm -hmm. You know, they just look at that as like a perk or something, you know, um, but, you know, but they are considered bonuses when your company does that kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, business owners have to gauge the effects of raises and bonuses, on, like I said, on their company's profit margin. Were you going to say something? I, I just remember um, you were telling me a while back when um, uh, one of your employees came over, either from the federal government or from a uh, private industry and uh, they came to work for you and you had all of these things that you did for your employees, you gave to your employees, like you, you gave back so much. And they said, in all my 20 some years with the federal government, nobody has ever done anything to show this much appreciation for what I do or what I bring to the table. So employee morale is key. It is mm -hmm. so key to keeping um, business continu continuity, you know, your people happy. Um, and your folks do business development for you every day because every they are on the front lines with your customers, you know, with that one-on-one -on -one time, you know, when you're behind the scenes, you know, growing the business, getting more business, doing business development, but they're there every day doing business development. Yes. So yes. showing that, that type of appreciation, I think is very healthy for the company and for the employer and the employee. Yes. You know, we still get those emails. As a matter of fact, um, because we give, uh, Starbucks gift cards to people uh, for their birthdays and, um, and a card. And I just received uh, an email that I shared with my, my senior executive team from one of our new 
uh, trainers out of Jacksonville, Florida, saying that, wow, you know, never received anything like this. So we still get a lot of those, which, you know, even some of the ones who uh, actually went to, if you recall, we had a, an employee who had, uh, was married with five children. Mm -hmm. You know, when did they get to go to a, um, a Redskins game together? Mm -hmm. All five of them. Well, five, six, seven of them. Mm -hmm. or, or go to a, um, a Mystics game or a mm -hmm. Wizards game together. So, you know, most of the time when we had a suite, we, we would have like family night or something, but we'd make sure that that whole family was able to go to a football game to, you know. An event, uh, yeah. Yeah, an event. And, and you know, then the, the emails of, from people who say that, um, wow, I never been to a live sporting event before. Yes, yes. You know, those were just as important too. And it made me feel good that they can say, I, I did this as a first with JMA. So, yes. um, so just, you, just like you said, there's so many ways that you can, um, you know, make your people happy, keep them happy. And, and the monthly birthday celebrations that we do, where we send out uh, cupcakes or uh, edible arrangements to all of the employees. Now we do it on Zoom, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, we sing happy birthday to everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. And everybody's been invited to attend. And it's great. We, Zoom is actually wonderful in that before we only did it at the headquarters. Mm -hmm. So the people who are away from the headquarters in Oklahoma City or in different states, um, they weren't always able to, um, to tune in. So, you know, now we do it on Zoom so everybody can come on board and, um, and see who's celebrating a birthday and we can all celebrate them together. together. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a wonderful thing. It really is. Um, yeah, so we've, uh, you know, we've covered a lot. Um, and I think it's a lot of important uh, things that we've color, color, covered, excuse me, um, that's important to people. As somebody actually put here, um, you know, thank you for the information. Um, I see that we have some uh, new people just joined us, and I apologize that, you know, you missed the, the gist of what we said. But the great thing about this is that we're going to post it on both of our um, Instagram pages so that people can go back and listen to some of the things that we talked about today. So any, any uh, parting comments, Ronette? No, it's just good to see you, and I'm glad we we're able to continue to do this. Uh, next week, I believe we do have a, a special guest, two special guests next week, so um, yes. it'll actually be a, a great, fun show next yes. week. And then we're also going to get Everett Pearsall back yes. uh, so that we can get him live again because, like I said, he has so much knowledge to share, Absolutely. and everyone will be excited to hear what he has to say. For sure. And we, also, we want to say uh, rest in peace. Yes. to the notorious RBG. BG. She's going to um, lie in repose at the Supreme Court building on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. So um, I think they're going to do her like they did um, uh, the congressman. Um, Don Lewis. Yeah, and just put her at the door so people can just stream by at the below the steps or at the bottom of the stairs. So they can at least view her casket up above. I did go to the Supreme Court when just Rehnquist died. He used to be the top uh, Supreme Court justice. And um, I remember standing in line and going to view his. He was in the rotunda of the Supreme Court building. So it's sad that we can't go in because of COVID. But, um, but I'm glad that they're making an arrangement for her to be visible so that we can go by and pay our respects Absolutely. and i know a lot of people are going to be doing that i'm sure yes so, yes uh, i'm gonna take uh, my youngest daughter uh up there this week so we're gonna try to go extremely early mm -hmm. so we can get in there so yeah, yeah. we really want to thank those of you who joined us uh thank you so much we you know we we're, we're, we were pretty bad this week because we didn't even send out our notice that we were doing this we just kind of did it but we're going to get better. <laughs> We've had so much going on that we didn't do our due diligence and do our homework. So we apologize for that. Um, but we're going to do better because we're just excited that, you know, even if, if we can help just one person, it, it's just so important. We, we got this knowledge and we can't keep it to ourselves. We have to share it. It's our obligation uh, as women, as black women, as entrepreneurs, 
um, just as human beings, to share what we have, to try to help others. And if we've made some mistakes, we want to make sure that you're aware of them so that you don't make the same mistakes if, um, you know, if it's at all possible. So I just want to say thank you all for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, and have a great one. And right. you as well. Love you. I love you too. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.